Okay, so we're going to talk about uh, advanced sound for DSLR cameras. Today we got Dave Schwartz, who's been here once before. He's a predator, producer, director, editor. We've got Nick Barbieri. Did I say that right, Nick? Sure. Nick, thanks for coming. You got this neat little Zoom device, which we're going to be talking about today. And we got Jeff Beaumont, a location sound mixer soundman. Why is sound always the bastard child to video people? Actually, I don't know. You're asking the wrong guy. Because <laughs> it's, it's huge in the things that I work, the projects that I work on. I think that more than 50% of the content comes through, usually through speech or through music. So it's, it's always an important aspect to a video. You know, and I've always said that uh, the real sign of an indie project to me is in the sound. You know, the indie guys have certainly figured out how to get the video looking like a motion picture. We've done that. But to get great sound or to get that sort of pseudo Hollywood sound is difficult. So that's the discussion we're going to have today. How do we get great sound with DSLRs? Well, the sound quality on a DSLR, because it's a, it's a camera, it's originally designed as a film camera, and then they've adapted them to uh, taking moving pictures. But the sound quality was an afterthought. One thing we do know is there's, an, at least most of the models I've seen, there's an automatic gain control, so you have like no manual control of the audio. The other thing is, if you want to hook it up to an external mic or an external mixer, which is always a good idea, you basically have a little mini connector for plugging audio into it, and those things break really easily. There's a, so there's a durability issue and a noise issue with that. But there are adapters that you can get that'll get you XLR inputs that you can go in there, but we still have that problem of the compression or the limiter. Now, Nick. Let's talk about this Zoom device. One of my missions going to NAB was really to find some kind of way that I could sort of put my trust in for doing double system sound that was inexpensive and worked well with DSLRs. So talk to me about your product. Well, Zoom is a Japanese company and they started making these personal handy recorders and they include onboard stereo microphones right here, condenser microphones. Um, this particular unit is the new one. It's called the H4N. And it had these XLR combo input jacks for audio guys like Dave was talking about. This is a line level input and an XLR balanced input. You can choose either or. This unit delivers phantom power, which many of the microphones in the field will require. For certain types of production, especially you know certain projects that I think a digital SLR is uh, most useful for, uh, you, you're talking about event videographers, wedding videographers, uh, doing documentary work and uh, corporate industrial style things that need yeah. that. And indie guys. Indie guys especially who need that shallow field. So the fact that you have this in your toolbox, uh, that you could be able to pull that out and just roll nat sound in an environment. Or uh, I used the example of um, wedding videographers just grabbing a little bit of sound of you know the audience and that sound that you need of the um, bridesmaids getting ready. I mean, if you're just looking for audio clips to bed underneath, to to blow away disk space at 35 megs a second or 50 megs a second, you know, using a using a digital camera, a video camera, it just doesn't seem to make sense when at, all at, you need is yeah. a little bit of that sound. At half the resolution of that too. What what resolution is that recording at? This records anywhere from MP3. Uh, down about 48, all the way, uh, it's stereo wave file, it starts at 4416 and goes up to 24-bit 96 kilohertz resolution, which is DVD audio quality. Let's talk a little bit about how you would use this like to do location sound. Well, if you were just shooting um, B-roll and you were, <clears throat> you were running around real quick, um, and you didn't have a lot of time to set up, attaching on the camera, if you have a rig that you can balance, the, you know, balance it out right, um, that would work pretty well. So it would be attached to the camera and you just roll it and that's great. Um, it's always better to get a microphone as close as possible to the subject. So the beauty of that is you can separate it. You, could, you can hide it in the scene like we're doing right here, just you know, putting it out of sight of the camera. Um, you can have someone hold it closer to the action. Um, you know, so you can position the camera where you get the best image and position the microphone where you get the best sound. If you're doing a production that's advanced enough to have a shotgun mic on a boom pole, I always like using a small mixer um, and you know, having it on a shoulder harness or a waist Oh, absolutely, if you can afford it. Well, the beauty of this is you plug the outputs of the little mixer directly into that. You set, you, know, you set it up with your tone so the levels are okay. And you can use the levels on the mixer, which are designed to be for field production. So you can hold the boom and you can look down and actually see what what you're adjusting. It's never fun, especially with a small camera, to be tethered to a cable, which, is, which happens with a lot of uh, cameras. 
And so the beauty of do, another beauty of doing double system is audio guy can position himself where he needs to be in a room or on a location, get as close to the action as possible, and the cameraman can position himself to be where he needs to be to get the best shot, and there's no cables in between and nothing, just one extra little step in post-production to sync those two things up. I, I personally love this thing. I mean, what, what is the street price of this? $349. You, you, an adapter might cost you that much to get into that camera, and then you've got all the limitations of the, that camera. The D90 has similar scenarios. The GH1, I haven't personally played with it, but I gotta believe it's gonna have similar scenarios. You know, these, these cameras are meant for picture and not for sound. Well, let's do this. Let's go, we're gonna have a little breakaway where we go and we're gonna sort of test this thing out, show how you can set it up on your camera, show how you can use it, and then we'll come back and we'll have a little more discussion about it. Cool? We've got a filmmaker kit, a Zakuto filmmaker kit. I've got my talent, Jessica. She's framed in and in focus. Uh, Nick, why don't you roll that? Okay, so we're rolling sound and picture? Speed. Okay, cut. You gotta push two buttons, that's kind of a bummer, but you have killer sound, that's kind of a plus. We're using an arm right now, a large arm, and we put one of our Zycros on the back of this H4N, and it's kind of now sort of like um, an ENG, you know, filmmaker setup here where you, you can control your sound, you can see your picture and your sound reel all at the same time. I think it's kind of a cool setup. Now let's go and we'll try a different setup, okay? So here, here what we're showing is basically an on, it's, it's acting as an on-camera mic. Yep. Yep. Uh, so you'd set your levels here, you'd hit record, and then you're, you're doing shots. Show them how it would work. Yeah, you know, it doesn't add, it adds weight. Obviously, it's adding, you know, the weight of the device, but it's adding it right over the center of gravity of the camera. Yeah. So it's totally, in my opinion, it's totally usable uh, to be able to get great stereo audio, which, by the way, isn't even possible with any of the hot shoe uh, microphones that exist right now for this camera you're not getting stereo audio, plus you know, you're still doing audio recording onto the camera. So the fact that we're getting uh, much better stereo separation, much higher quality, and uh, you know, I've got some control over that, and I can plug in my earbuds or my headphones to be able to listen, yeah. uh, this is a great on-camera solution. What we're doing for mounting here, here's kind of a neat little feature of how we got this mounted, is uh, you just flip the lever, and this comes off, so you can leave that on your camera. You can mount a light on there now. You can do all kinds of interesting stuff. And uh, you can also, now it has the ZUD on the back of this device, you can, we have all kinds of attachments to get it on poles, stands, and all the kinds of other stuff you might want to do. And you can just run off and get some stuff, come right back to the camera, plop it back on, that's it, it's locked in there. This whole mount setup is on our website under, I think it's in, a, in the recommended uh, products with the H4N. Okay, now we're gonna take a look at a full gunstock shooter in handheld mode. And this looks really nice. Here we got two weights on the back for a little more counterbalance here. You got your Z finder there. We got a wireless lob on a wireless plate. And I like this whole configuration. Now you can actually, this is a one man band configuration where, uh, and this is a very common ENG camera guy setup. But the cool part here is you're monitoring your sound with your one eye and you're shooting with the other eye. Yep. Okay, hey Jessica, tell us a little bit about Twitter. All right, we got Twitter is a microblogging site. You get 140 characters to put your message out. You can do links to pictures, video, other websites. It's a great way to condense your whole message. Okay, cut picture, cut sound. Okay, what do you think? I mean, here you go. You got the whole setup. You, she's wirelessly mic'd here. Yeah, there's a lot to do, you know, for one person. But I think that these are the circumstances in which a lot of people are going to be operating, you know. There are times when you need to have everything on board and you're not going to have a sound guy. And this is sort of that configuration. Okay, so I'm going to show you how easy it is to sync up the Zoom audio with footage from a 5D Mark II. I'm just going to drag this audio into my Final Cut sequence here. In the timeline here, you can see that I've already got my 5D Mark II footage in, and I've marked it where the sync point should be. You can hear it there. We can kind of use that as a helpful reference to drop in our audio. See like these little audio spikes. So it makes it pretty easy. Sounds pretty good. Because the, the, the 5D shoots at 30 frames per second, you do need to extend the audio or slow it down by 99.9%. .9%. To, ch to change the speed, I just need to highlight the audio here. I go Apple J, and then I can just put a 99.9%. .9%. 
So just to check that, I've come to the back here. This is all the audio tracks. But the mag was just sitting on it. It wasn't like... And then I'll mute the Canon audio. The mag was just sitting on it. It wasn't like... And that's just the audio from the zoom. And that's how you sync the audio with the zoom device. Okay, so we finished the test. Uh, before I get, we, we get into the conclusions, I just want to ask Jeff a couple things that we didn't really cover at the beginning. One of the things, Jeff, that we want to, I, I want to broach is this idea of you know, using this like, like here in this scenario, we have four mics. How do you really do that with this device? Um, you use two of them. That's one easy way to do it. The other way would be to get an external mixer with four inputs and then be able to uh, record onto that and mix live. Yeah, I mean, you, in, it used to be mixers were really expensive. I mean, what can you, what, what kind of price point are you looking at to get into a four-channel mixer, do you think? Um, you know, $500 and up. Yeah, uh, um, oh, so, so it's affordable. It, yeah, it is affordable. There's, there's several that are designed kind of for the indie film, you know, DV filmmaker market, and, uh, and then they go up from there. The ideal scenario is you'd have your mixer, you could be riding the audios a little bit on different mics, you know, like in this scenario, we might actually have four tacks. I mean, I'd probably get into a, an eight-channel mixer or a six-channel mixer if you can afford it, you know. And a dedicated sound guy, that's, that's well, a big thing. Well, oh yeah, no, I mean, <laughs> that if you can. No, and I, I, frankly, I tell everybody this. I say, look it, you really should just hire a soundman when you, period, because He's going to, you don't have, typically guys don't have all the right mics, they don't have wireless mics, the good ones, they don't have a mixer, you know, they, they don't have a recording device. So, I mean, especially with these DSLRs, you need a sound, man. I mean, that's step one. Also, um, you need somebody who's spending his entire um, concentration, his, all his time listening to the audio, because typically where people figure out they have problems, it's in the edit and it's too late to fix it then, or it's expensive to fix it then. We have somebody who's spending all his time li just listening, you'll pick up stuff quicker. I always tell people, would you shoot with your eyes closed? Well, no, they wouldn't do that, but, they, but very often people will record audio without headphones on, without somebody listening the whole time. All right, so let's just have some real quick conclusions. My conclusion, and then we're gonna move around here. Uh, double system is really the only way you can do DSLR unless somebody can show me something different. Uh, secondly, you should have a dedicated person to doing your sound or at least monitoring it, and uh, that's it. It's pretty good. My conclusions are that uh, this device, especially for the price point, is so incredibly flexible that uh, for all those people looking for one device that can cover a bunch of bases, this is a really good place to look. It's a great way to record stereo audio, and it gives you many ways to do so at an affordable price to anyone. Jeff? Um, just never forget that audio is at least, at least half of um, the content that you're presenting and you need to put a lot of effort into it. Like you said, a dedicated sound guy, try to use the best equipment you can afford or hire somebody who owns it. Exactly. Okay, guys, thank you so much. This was a great, this was really a great time. Good to see you again. Nice thank to meet you. you, Nick and Jeff. Pleasure to meet you.